Thank you so much, our fantastic host, Auntie and Melissa. Such a pleasure to be here. Today, we will be exploring some of the key trends and considerations when it comes to adopting AI. I will start by sharing some trends which are really shaping the AI industry right now, and then share a few key considerations for organizations to think about when it comes to scaling AI. I have only 20 minutes, so let's, let's dive right in. So the first trend I want to talk about is really around productivity. We all know about the productivity revolutions triggered by steam, by, the new, um, uh, by electricity, and by the internet. And today, I believe we're starting to see a new paradigm shift, and, and that's powered by AI. And let me explain. If you do not live in a cave, you probably have seen, have tried, have read about ChatGPT. Uh, that's the first time we mentioned ChatGPT in the presentation, by the way, Melissa. It's one of the most intelligent chatbots we have on this planet. And what makes it unique is not the chatbot itself, not the sim simple user interface. It's the fact that you know, this, this, this application is powered by one of the largest language models on this planet. And that matters because large language models, they bring so much intelligence into applications like ChatGPT. People are already using ChatGPT for a variety of tasks, from copywriting to code documentation, and they're gaining a lot of productivity benefits from such application. And it's not only in ChatGPT. Let me mention another example around Bing Chat. For years, Bing has been an underdog, but that has changed you know, when it comes to uh, internet search since the launch of the new Bing. Uh, with Bing Chat, you can have a similar experience just like ChatGPT. Um, you can have natural language conversation. You can ask questions. You can provide inquiries. You can get answers in natural language back to you. Uh, what makes Bing Chat unique is that when you ask questions, actually it does an internet search real time behind the scene, and then surface back to you a summarized answer to you with a list of references for you to go deeper and validate. And that's really important because now internet search has become so much more productive, um, so much more productivity, uh, so much more productive. You no longer have to read the top three or ten articles from the search. You can. Get get the summary the answer right away. And this is not only happening in the text space, it's also happening in the visual space. So uh, every, every picture on this slide is actually created by an AI model called Stable Diffusion, which is developed by Stability AI. So it's an AI model that turns natural language into images. You can actually decide on you know, uh, the content, the style, the lighting, even the angle of the images. Uh, and that's going to be taken care of by the AI model. You just need to describe your requirements in natural language. So this is going to be massive for creati creativity professionals because they no longer need to start from scratch. So if you are over 30 years old, like myself, you probably remember Clippy. Some people say Clippy is the father or the grandfather for many of the AI assistants we have today. Uh, while Clippy was cute, but not entirely a, su a success when it comes to increasing our productivity, but now you will see a new generation of Clippies which are coming to us, and they're called co-pilots. So today, let me welcome you into this new era of, of, of AI co-pilots where AI is going to become the right hand for every role and every profession. With AI Copilot, we are relieved, we as humans, we are relieved from repetitive and mundane tasks, so we can actually focus on solving problems using our creativity and strategic thinking. Let me give you some examples uh, to make it real. The first one I want to talk about is around GitHub Copilot. I know we have a lot of developers in the audience, so many of you probably have used this already or at least read about it. So think about GitHub Copilot as the auto completion for developers, for programming. Uh, but in fact, you can do more. So, you know, from, uh, from documentation to creating SQL queries, uh, GitHub Copilot is already increasing developer productivities at scale. In fact, Many of my colleagues at Microsoft on the engineering side, they are already writing you know, up to 50% of their code on a daily basis with GitHub Copilot. And that's just amazing. 
And it's not only Microsoft. Uh, you know, another example is Duolingo, one of the most popular language learning apps. And as you can see from this slide, you know, by adopting GitHub Copilot, they actually, as an organization, have increased their developer productivity by 25%. And that's a lot because you know right now we're in this talent market where every software developer matters, uh, and increasing their productivity helps you become more prof prof profitable as a company. Uh, and also, you know, we have seen 70% of pull requests, you know, at Duolingo by adopting GitHub Copilot, and that's again massive because that's a key metric to to you know really measure the velocity of development. So it's not only for developers. Actually, Copilot is coming to you know all of us. So um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have launched you know Microsoft 365 Copilot by combining large language models with enterprise data within your organization. You know, GitHub. Uh, I mean, Microsoft 365 Copilot allows you to you know chat with your own internal knowledge base from documentation to presentation, uh, you know, to calendar to to context, etc. You can use your natural language to find relevant information and retrieve them with within your organization just by chatting you know with the business chat functionality very similar to chat GPT and you know let me let me give you one particular you know feature which I love so I have a lot of meetings quite often I'm the host of the meetings and that means I need to take responsibility of you know uh, recapping the meetings summarize the meeting and defining action items uh, and I, I can confidently say that you know taking meeting notes is one of the least favorite things of mine. So now, with Copilot in Microsoft Teams, I'm able to use AI to automatically transcribe the meeting, summarize the meeting. Think about a two-hour meeting into a few paragraphs in text, and, and that's so much easier to recap. And not only summarizing the meeting, but also giving you a list of conclusions you have, uh, you know, you have concluded during the meeting, but also a list of action items, even assigned to the right person, based on the discussion with, with, uh, within the meeting. And that's massive. It's already making me uh, and my colleagues more productive at Microsoft, and this is coming to you as well. So uh, the vision is really we are going to bring you know Copilot to every profession. I already mentioned you know Copilot for developers, Copilot for knowledge workers, but now we're bringing Copilot to also you know security professionals, sales marketing professionals, etc. That's the first trend around, producti around productivity. Let me now talk about the second uh, you know uh, trend. So you might wonder you know. Applications are getting smarter, we're getting more productive, but what is happening behind the scene? So, well, it's actually foundation models. They are actually uh, the game changers you know, behind the scene. So traditionally speaking, you know, AI models tend to be very narrow, well-defined. Uh, they, they can only do one thing. But now with foundation models, they, they can actually become more versatile. They, brought, they bring more in, you know, broader intelligence to, uh, to us you know, by serving multiple use cases. So let, let me define foundation models. They are essentially, you know, large AI models pre-trained with massive amount of data, and it matters. You know, the size matters in this case because you know foundation models they actually you know support multiple use cases that are more versatile, and. If you look at you know the, the graph on the right side, you know foundation models they have been you know growing exponentially in size. You know from the first GPT with just over a hundred million parameters to the latest version with billions of parameters. You know um, they are you know significantly increasing their size but also capabilities, uh, and that's of course enabling more intelligent applications that we will benefit from as humans. Let's take Microsoft as one example. I'm mean, obviously I'm biased. I work for Microsoft, so let me take take this. Uh, so at Microsoft, we have been building foundation models, you know, from Microsoft Research, but also in our partnership with OpenAI. You have heard a lot about GPT, and those are models, you know, around the natural language understanding and generation. But we also have models like, you know, Florence uh, from Microsoft Research, which, which is the state-of-art computer vision model. Really, really, uh, you know, uh, impressive. You should definitely check it out. So when we have those foundation models, we do two things. On one hand, we turn those foundation models into cloud services, so they are widely available by developers like yourself. 
On the other hand, we infuse the same advanced AI capabilities into different software product services that we're offering, from Bing to LinkedIn, you know, to, to Outlook, to even Xbox. So I know many of you are developers, so I want to give you another level of details when it comes to the cloud AI services. So let's zoom in on Azure Open AI services. So um, you know, in brief, Azure Open AI server, ser uh, service turns large language models into cloud AI services, so you can use them as simply as using any API. The use cases are really endless, but let me just highlight a few you know, key capabilities here. So together with OpenAI, we have made several models you know, available already in the cloud, you know, from you know, GPT-4, for text, from, from ChatGPT, uh, in conversation, but also you know, Codex for code generation, understanding, and DALI for generating images, very similar to, to stable diffusion I talked about. So when you have those models, you can do many things. And we already start to see customers you know, using them for content generation, for example, creating you know, uh, for, um, for, for copywriting, and also creating images for, for marketing campaigns, uh, but also doing summarization of internal documents as well as you know, summarizing you know, the transcription uh, from a call between a customer and a call agent. You can, of course, do code generation documentation, as I mentioned before, with GitHub Copilot. Uh, last but not least, you can also do semantic search, and that means you can help your customers navigate through a massive catalog of products but also internally, you can help your employees to find information about IT or HR easily. So they no longer have to navigate the 2,000 folders you have. They can simply ask questions you know, um, you know, in natural language, uh, in, in a so-called you know, enterprise chat GPT interface, if you like. Imagine having chat GPT within your organization. I look forward to that. And now, let me show you a couple of examples on how our customers and partners are already today adopting Azure OpenAI service. First, let me talk about Stratbag. Stratbag is a European leader when, when it comes to construction. They're operating globally. So by using Azure OpenAI, they're actually assessing and predicting risk for new construction projects. I mean, construction projects are expensive, so um, it, they should not fail, right? So it's good for us to have a good understanding on the risk level. So they are able to reach 80% accuracy level with their risk prediction model. Really impressive. Another example is from the United States. CarMax, they are actually the largest car dealer in the States. And they used to spend you know, hours and, and, and you know, even days, weeks for their internal folks to actually look through all the reviews and product descriptions for all the car models they have. By the way, it's a lot. They have you know, more than uh, 45,000 car models. But now, they are using you know, Azure OpenAI to actually summarize and analyze those reviews. And that, you know, that, that would take them you know, from days into hours uh, to save them a lot of time and make their employees more productive, and also relieving them from really boring tasks, to be honest, make them more happy. Another example I want to show is a smaller player. So Zamo is actually a software startup. They're building conversational AI platform. And what they're doing you know, with Azure OpenAI is to actually turn web pages and also you know, documentations into the knowledge base, the brain power for converse, conversational AI bot. You might have used the bot before from your bank, from your retailers. They, they are not always that smart, right? So, it's important for us to increase their knowledge base, and this is exactly doing that with Azure OpenAI. So those are good examples, and I have shown you already two trends, AI-powered productivity revolution and also foundation models. Now, let me spend, spend some time to share a few key considerations for organizations to, to think about when they are you know, going into this new era of AI and, and think about how they can thrive and how they can lead in this new age of AI. So let me start by talking about people. That's what always comes first. Um, and you know, in particular, I think you know, we need to train and skill your people you know, across your entire organization at this new age of AI. Uh, if you look at this slide, you know, I'm showing you the typical life cycle for AI and machine learn learning development, you can see there are different roles involved, you know, from data engineer to machine learning engineer to data scientist to DevOps folks to security experts. You know, those are important roles for you to train on the topic of AI from a technical perspective, but that's not enough. 
Um, you also need to see that you, know, you have a lot of business partners you need to work closely with, when, well, closely with when it comes to AI development and deployment. And those can be uh, the owners of business processes from sales to marketing, those can be infrastructure experts, and those can be your business decision makers or even your executive leaders. It's incredibly important for them to understand the implications of AI as well. So they can, on one hand, provide domain expertise into the development of AI, but also on the other hand, support you when it comes to putting those solutions into production and actually you know, harvest tangible business value from AI solutions. So that's all about people. Second, let's talk about process. So, you know, AI adoption is so much more beyond technology. AI solutions can always, you know, um, enhance our productivity. And quite often, you know, we use AI solutions to either automate or optimize. And that means, you know, there will be changes to your existing business process. And there might also be implications to certain roles within the organization, which might need to evolve, you know, as you adopt AI at scale. So for example, if you adopt an AI chatbot, your customer agent will be relieved from you know, answering repetitive basic questions from your customers, and they can focus on addressing more complex inquiries. And that makes them more happy, and they, that makes them an expert than just you know, uh, you know, focusing on mundane tasks. Another example is that with, uh, with the generative AI solutions, you know, copywriters, they would no longer start from scratch. And now they actually become editors because they can take a draft from AI and then they think about how they can polish and then bring their creativity and, and marketing expertise into that process. But remember, you know, AI will always be the co-pilot and humans will always be in charge. Uh, because you know, essentially we want to use AI to enhance our productivity, but we are the decision makers and we will be the one supervising AI and governing the impact of AI within the organization. Last but not least, let's talk about the platform. I work for a you know, platform provider, so I have to talk about this one. But then, of course, I'm not going to sell you anything. What I want to emphasize is that you know, there are two things you need to think about beyond the AI and machine learning platform you, you, you will need for your, for your adoption. The first thing is really about laying a solid data foundation. Uh, some people say when it comes to AI and machine learning, you know, crap in, crap out. So it's important for you to have your data organized in a good place. From operational database to, you know, analytic solutions like data warehouse to data governance solutions to understand how data is flowing within your organization, you need to have your data in place. Second thing is that with AI solutions becoming more and more powerful, we, I mean, it's, it's more important than ever to think about responsible AI. Not only are you thinking about responsible AI on the principal level, but also put them into practice. And that means you need to train your employees to understand what is responsible AI, what does it mean for technical, for technical roles and business roles, but also have detailed policies, processes, and toolbox for your practitioners to practice responsible AI on a daily basis. And that means your designers should think about it, your data scientists should think about it, your compliance legal team should think about it as well. So of course, you know, we as Microsoft, together with Solita, we are more than, happy, more, than happy, uh, more than happy to support you on many of those topics, from building platform you know, to practicing responsible AI, uh, or establishing process change, man change management for you, or working with you on training your you know, practitioners and decision makers across the organization. OK, so uh, today, I have shared the two trends when it comes to AI enhanced productivity and foundation models becoming the innovation platform. And I have talked about three considerations, people, platform, process. Hopefully you, you are taking away some useful information from this session, hopefully some inspirations and insights from me. Let me emphasize, the opportunity is really yours. AI is becoming more powerful and more accessible than ever. But it's up to you and your organization to put AI into practice to create tangible business and societal impact. I look forward to seeing what you can achieve with AI. And 
you know, let's let's go out there, make AI in, put AI into practice, and create you know um, you know um, good benefits for us as human beings. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this, and a wonderful shout to the forefather of all assistance tools, Clippy. Yes. Rest in peace, Clippy. We love you, <laughs> now and forever. Uh, before I get started with interrogating our speaker, I do have a question for you, dear audience member. Yes, you. So do you feel worried that AI will go from automating simple manual tasks to performing more important functions typically reserved for humans? You can answer yes. You can answer no, and if you don't feel comfortable saying anything or giving a strong opinion, you can say maybe, that's fine too. Now, my question for you is, so you talked about foundation models yeah. and how they really are the basis for all of these uh, modern applications that we use every day and not even necessarily realize, like things in LinkedIn or Word or helping you correct your language, uh, voice-assisted AI, all these. How representative do you feel uh, that these foundation models are of the global population? That's a, a very valid question. So, you know, as we know, uh, just to overly simplify, foundation models like, you know, GPT models, they are trained on a snapshot of the internet. Uh, and, you know, internet, as we know, you know, is rich of, you know, great information, but at the same time, it's also biased because, you know, the content on the internet are, uh, quite often, you know, generated, you know, in English, for example, right? So we don't have so much Finnish language or Norwegian language on, on the internet. Uh, at the same time, you know, the more developed the countries, they absolutely generate more content when it comes to text, images, videos, etc., because they have more access to, you know, uh, laptops and mobile devices, etc. So that means there are intrinsic bias on the internet, and that. That, that becomes the bias in the training data for large foundation models, right? Uh, so we have to acknowledge that. But then, of course, knowing the boundaries and limitations of foundation models would help us to use them properly, right? It's like using any tool. Nothing is perfect when you understand you know, what you can use them for, what you cannot, right? And at the same time, I really think we as an industry need to improve that as well. So going forward in the future, we need to find more efficient ways of training foundation model. And we should also be thinking about how we can curate data set so that they can, they can become less biased and more fair for, um, and to better represent the population that we have on this planet. We have plenty full of questions from our audience. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start with the straightforward question. Is it safe to let AI summarize meeting minutes? Uh, absolutely, but then depending on which AI you're referring to, right? <laughs> so you, I would advise against you know, using, your, uh, using chat GPT uh, or Bing chat you know, to summarize your uh, internal meetings because there are internal sensitive information and you don't want to leak that in the public services. But, but uh, I highly encourage you to explore services like Azure OpenAI and to build an internal chatbot or internal enterprise chat GPT. Then you can safely and confidently talk about business topics you know, within your organization. So I think you know, privacy, security, that's top, uh, top of mind when you're adopting AI. Uh, another question that, that we hear often is, do you think it's possible to scale uh, the use of these large foundation models with billions of parameters mm -hmm. like you told mm -hmm. us in an energy efficient manner. What are your thoughts? Uh, that's, that's a very, very good point. So of course, you know, right now, if you think about the training process of large foundation models, it is expensive. It takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of you know, energy, a lot of people, expertise as well. But that's the whole point because we train foundation models they, so they become the foundational platform for you to build your solutions on top. And that means you as a developer, as an organization, no longer need to train your own model, your own large models. So we do this once and for all. And then you can build your solutions you know, on top. And that's going to be more efficient. But at the same time, of course, you know, we are as an industry committed, but also as Microsoft committed in you know, making large models more um, effective and more productive. Uh, in fact, in Microsoft, we have been contributing to several big open source projects, including DeepSpeed, where we're looking into how you can optimize the training process and also deployment and inferencing of large models so they're more energy efficient, efficient and they're more scalable as well. Uh, 
Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, a, a bit of a more general question. Looking at the, uh, there will be new jobs created. Mm -hmm. Prompt engineer is something that didn't really exist Absolutely. six months ago. Mm -hmm. but, but there's also uh, different estimations on, on, on job losses. Mm -hmm. so, so what are your thoughts? And again, mm -hmm. we understand that the, the speed is, is just so crazy. But uh, what about uh, our, our question is on creative writers, illustrators, coders. What is their future uh, in, in, in their current jobs? As the well, and what are the fundamental limitations of the foundation models when compared to human minds? What are you, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I think you know um, my personal opinion is that you know foundation models they bring a lot of knowledge, they bring a lot of information, uh, and they bring a lot of common sense understanding you know into the discussion or into the business process you are applying that. But at the same time, we as humans, you know, we are truly creative, we are truly intelligent. Uh, and you know we bring strategic thinking you know into the picture so i think you know we as humans you know by so by using ai you know which can relieve us from you know the the, the more basic and more repetitive tasks we can focus on solving uh, actual problems problems which are more challenging if you think about the developer right, do they really enjoy writing you know lines of code after one another not necessarily. They want to solve difficult problems, mm -hmm. and the code, the simple code, can be actually assisted by you know um, by, by AI. And also, same goes for documentation. I don't know a developer who actually love you know writing that. So now that can be taken care of by AI, right? So I think you know with AI systems, we can actually focusing on where we as humans can shine. And for me, that's you know problem solving skills for complex problems, creative thinking, but also strategic thinking. And and. I also want to serve, I'm really happy that we have so many questions yeah. from the audience, yeah. really great. But, but you mentioned learning and development. This is a, a company-wide effort. Absolutely. So, we, so uh, a very brief answer to the question, how to identify and maximize the value of people in companies? Uh, maximize, uh, I think, you know, for me, a top of mind is to retain your people, to make them happy. That's the first thing. Absolutely. And the second thing is to make them product productive. I think with AI systems, you can do both. Actually, there's a study done by GitHub, uh, by GitHub you know, on the internet, you can find it. So with solutions like GitHub Copilot, developers are not only more productive, more productive, they're also more satisfied at work. And that's what matters. Excellent. Let's go to Paul. Yes. Thank you all for responding to the poll questions. Uh, right now, we have an interesting selection of answers. So 20% answered yes, 47% uh, answered no, and there were 32% of people who didn't have a strong opinion. I see you. What now do you, now yes. we know where we are. Now we know where we stand. That's yeah. very good. Thank Excellent. you. At this point, Xiaofeng, thank you so much. Thank you.